In today's video, I'm going to do something I've never done before and fit a piece of paint protection film. Hello and welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel. Now, one of the worst things that can happen if you're fussy about your car is stone chip damage, because however careful you are, it's largely beyond your control. Well, luckily around 10 years ago, it became very popular to protect the paint on your car with a clear plastic film called paint protection film. The only downside is that it can prove rather expensive. When I had my Mark 8 Golf GTI Club Sport, I got a quote for protecting its front end that was the best part of two thousand pounds which is a lot of money if you're not keeping the car for very long and it's a lot more than painting a panel should the worst come to the worst well since then i've discovered the paint protection film is actually quite inexpensive it's the labor that costs a lot of money so in today's video i'm going to do something i've never done before and fit a piece of paint protection film to my mark 7 golf gti club sport s so stay tuned because in this video you're going to find out whether it's a really easy job that's going to give me the confidence to do bigger sections on some of my other cars, potentially saving me thousands of pounds, or it's actually really difficult. The expensive paint protection film is going to end up in the bin, and we're going to understand why the professionals charge so much, because it's actually quite a very hard job. But before we get started, let me remind you guys how you can support the channel. The easiest way to do that is simply to subscribe. We're still getting a lot of views from non-subscribers and it's brilliant to get those views, but it'd be brilliant if you could subscribe as well. And I don't say this often enough, big thanks to everybody who has already subscribed. Okay, let's start off then by looking at the bits you need to do this job, starting with the paint protection film. Now, the reason I was motivated to do this job was thanks to a company called Aliath, who are based in Somerset. They've got a brilliant website and eBay shop where they list all their paint protection film kits and individual sections. The part we're going to fit to the Club Sport S is probably the easiest bit you can fit because it's a flat surface. It's for the top of the rear bumper, so effectively the load lip. We're doing this not only because it's easy, but because this area is very prone to damage. I know you can try and be careful, but if you've got something heavy in your boot and sometimes trying to get it out can lead to you resting it or dragging it across that top section of your bumper. So fit in this piece of film, which was £18.50 delivered, I think is a very good idea because painting the bumper would cost I don't know, about 300 pounds at today's rate. So this came in this tube with some very comprehensive instructions, which are here. And they also say, just email us if you want support, which is really nice. They have been very good at dealing with my inquiries by email. The only things I needed that I didn't already have were this film squeegee with felt tip, which you use for getting the water out from underneath the paint protection film. These are peanuts on eBay. And some isopropyl alcohol, which it states in here you need to use to degrease the panel. And you should also mix a bit in with some water, into the water with a bit of washing up liquid to create a solution which you spray onto the panel first. So this, the way this works is that you spray the panel and then apply the paint protection film and that then gives you the opportunity to move it into the right position at which point then you expel the water from underneath the film with this squeegee. Sounds easy. If you're doing it on a coldish day or doing a complicated panel with bends in it then they say you need a heat gun or a hairdryer should do the job. I don't think we're going to need that today but they're always really handy to have. So let's start off then by preparing the panel. As with a lot of things, preparation is key. You need to make sure there's no wax on the surface where the PPF is going. You need to make sure that if it's fresh paint, you've left it for three weeks to properly dry, otherwise you'll end up with a bit of a, a messy disaster. And you need to make sure the surface is dry. So we're going to just check under the seal for water. I washed it today, so there will be some. Now, when I got this car, it had a few little marks on the bumper and some of them are still there. I've polished them back but it's not worth going through the paint to get rid of them and with them polished back the surface is quite smooth. They're only relatively shallow scratches so the PPF should protect the bumper and also make it look better. So let's see how we get on. So I've got the isopropyl alcohol. This with a sprayer I think it was about seven pounds from Amazon it's quite nice to have for a few things because it's quite a good degreasing cleaner without being too aggressive like some spirits. 
So we're just going to give it a good wipe, make sure there's no residue of wax or polishing compounds on there. Now I have just noticed an area on the bumper where the tailgate has been rubbing and it's just put a little very minor abrasion into the paint. Now this isn't because this car's been in an accident, this is because it's very common on Golfs. I actually saw a brand new, like fresh out of the dealer, Mark 8, where the same thing had happened. But not so much a problem with damage to the bumper, but it can rub the paint off the tailgate and that can corrode. So that's the bigger problem. So just keep an eye on that. I'm not sure adding PPF will help the matter because it's going to be a few, about like 150 microns, I think, in depth, which could make it rub even more. So yeah, definitely one to watch. Okay, so in this sprayer bottle, we have normal water and washing up liquid. It says a 200 to one solution, which is pretty hard to measure. So I've just put a couple of drops of washing up liquid in there. It says also, if you're doing it on a cold day, you need to put some isopropyl alcohol in there. 20% of the mix should be that. It's quite warm today. I don't need to do it, but I put a splash in just to help the, as it said in the instructions, the adhesive addition to the panel. So here we go then. So the part, the PPF's in there with the squeegee. I just need to apply this to the rear panel. And uh, by the way, the PPF from Alias is made in Germany, which is reassuring on a German car. Okay, so let's just check this out before we start to apply it, make sure it's for this profile of bumper. And yeah, so the backing's a little bit bigger than the film itself. It definitely doesn't go on the other way around, so it's gotta be this way around, so that's good. It does go quite a long way up the side of the bumper, so we'll put a bit more spray there. And now let's peel this off. This is probably where a helper might come in handy. So this is self-adhesive. It's quite windy today as well, which isn't great. It's self-adhesive, so spraying it onto water might seem a bit weird, but it's key to doing this job properly. And now the wind except just at the wrong time. Okay, come back, don't stick to the car. So let's just get it positioned. So the beauty of it is we can move it around until it's right. Just put a bit more water on the angled section because the film's a bit bigger and just the top of the bumper, it's pretty comprehensive. So as you can see, I can move it around to my heart's content at the moment. Now I'm slightly surprised that the film doesn't actually fit the contour of the bumper. It's okay in the middle, but it kind of keeps a straight line while the bumper curves around like that. So I can't shape it because it causes a crease. I mean, I can actually on this side, but then I do it on this side and we get a crease here. Okay, it's not as easy as I thought. Even if I am happy with the gap on the outer edges of the PPF, it won't sit correctly down here. So it does need to be up against the raised section of the bumper and that then gives us, that then gives us the perfect line down the bottom. So I can get one side okay, but then that pushes this side out. In the middle, it's in the right position. So let's just try and get that to stick. So we're just forcing the water out with overlapping motions. And then that then gives the adhesive a clear 
run onto the rear bumper. But while we do this, I'm just going to try and change the angle of it slightly. Just without trying to, without it creasing. Because this needs to be tidy and it's, it's just too far out this way at the moment. It is kind of working. Okay, let's move over to this side, which again needs to be shaped. Well, amazingly, that actually so far seems to be going okay. It's perfectly in line now with the back of the bumper, better than the other side. Let's just get some water out, which because the bumper goes up is proving a bit harder. Okay, that's going pretty well so far. So I'm really happy with the alignment of this side. Just getting the water out from the section that points downwards. That's good. And then we've got a bit more water here. Because the bumper's curved, I guess this is where the skill comes in. Trying to use this to get water out from a curve is tricky. Well, that was very interesting. So initially I was a bit surprised that the PPF didn't actually fit the contour of the bumper, but when I started expelling the water with the squeegee, I realized pretty quickly you could shape it how you want it within reason. Now, the first bit I did was pretty good, and it follows the contour quite well, but it's slightly over down here, just like half a mil, if that. On this side, I felt a bit more confident about the shaping of it, and it's pretty much perfect. So. Uh, I'm quite happy with that. Now it does say you have to leave it for 24 hours before driving the car and it could take three to five days for the slight mist that remains underneath the PPF to vanish just because you can't get every tiny bit of water out and it's really visible on a black car. But generally it's really good. I made one mistake which was to use a squeegee I'd used to get a sticker off before with the harder edge and that had put some debris into the felt section and there is a bit where a bit of rubbish has gone under the PPF, making a white spot, which is really annoying. So if you're going to do this, make sure you use a clean one of these. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Unfortunately, I can't show you the finished product three to five days later because this video is going to go live a lot quicker than that. But I'm pretty sure it will settle down and it's, there is some warmth in the atmosphere now, which should dry out pretty quickly. So the next job is to do a PPF section for the front of the R8 bonnet. That is remarkably perfect for a car with 27,000 miles on the clock. Doesn't look like it's been painted, so it's important to PPF that before I start enjoying it this summer. So look out for that video. As ever, guys, thanks for watching this one. Keep subscribing, keep commenting, don't hit your car with your wedding ring, and see you for the next one very soon.